Greetings, this is Taylor Payton of TaypayArt.com and PowerPainters.org and I'm coming to you today with another Power Painters tutorial. So in this tutorial I'm going to be doing some figure drawing basics, some fast, simple, easy to digest figure drawing basics. Now this video would not exist had it not been for our newest member to the Power Painters Discord server. Uh, his name is Overarch and I want to thank Overarch for allowing me to critique his piece of art that he dropped into the critique zone which is one of the text channels in the Power Painters Discord server. Uh, if you want to join that server the link is in the description box below and you can post your stuff. Might not make a YouTube video out of it but you will most likely get some critique. We've been pretty good about that. Uh, we're about um, I think 36 members in now, so it's, it's kind of cool, it's ever-growing. Anyway, so I'm going to be taking this piece of art and talking about figure drawing basics using this guy here as an example. So what I did first was with, you know, prior to recording anything, um, I just started to figure out some basic things about the pose, about the body, and I want to break those down for you step by step so you understand what I'm doing here. So this is a very beginner oriented video. Um, if you're intermediate you might pick up a thing or two from this. Um, but what I'm basically going to be doing is taking this character and using it sort of as a thumbnail and sort of breaking down what's working, what's not working, and giving you some takeaways that you can bring into your own figure drawing endeavors. So first and foremost, let's grab our handy easy to see red color. Uh, what we want to think about right off the bat is our construction. So construction is so key. It is one of the main basics that you want to learn when you're putting anything together and that includes people um, or in this case figures, whatever you want to refer to uh, your subject as. You want to know how to put shapes together that make it feel solid and believable. So in this case we have some construction going on that's pretty decent, pretty workable. Um, the, the torso is, you know, sort of a nice rectangle. The arm is sort of floating out of the socket here and cruising over to the pose, which is, to me, a bit Dragon Ball Z-esque. I always think about Super Saiyans when uh, I see stuff like this. Uh, this arm is a little far reaching as far as coming out of the socket here. And the pose is pretty decent overall as far as, like, the pelvis goes. Uh, we just have some pretty basic wide stance going on so it's pretty easy to see the weight and the balance of the pose. Uh, we'll talk more about all these things as I just sort of redline here so you can see the basic shapes that are being used and how they're interacting. Now there's a couple perspective issues here but this is really isn't the video to address that. I will talk more about perspective in future videos especially if I get comments talking about that sort of thing because it's always important to know your vanishing points and your horizon line so that you can you know not make um, certain technical errors but in this case we're going to be talking mostly about the figure so this is essentially the pose that is coming through if you take away all the detail and while it's not a bad pose there are some ways we can definitely use our fundamentals to make it better um, I'm going to do that in this particular document and use this as a guide in order to do so so just redraw it um, I want to state first and foremost that there is nothing special about what I'm doing here. There is no magic. There is no trickery. It is all just fundamental ideas that have been practiced and transferred. You can learn to do these. I am not an immensely talented individual or anything. It's just been a firm degree of practice. So, um, And also learning from you know great artists like Andrew Loomis or uh, George Bridgman, for example. Anyway, let's do some step-by-step -step breakdowns here. I'm going to start with the head, as I often do with my figures, and this is just a force of habit, really. You can start with the spine, you can start with the pelvis, you can start with the torso, if you know what you're doing, if you know your fundamental pieces. But in this case, I'm going to start with the head. And the head is slightly off-center from the body, so I'm going to draw a center line right down the middle of the picture plane. And that is going to permit me to uh, sort of gauge where my figure is going to go. This is my measuring stick. It's like a ruler for figure drawing and I'm doing it on a different layer. If you're working traditionally, just do it super light. Grab a ruler, grab a straight edge, make it super light, easy to erase, um, and that will serve you well. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to place that head slightly off-center, as I mentioned earlier. 
and I like to draw a nice oval-esque shape for the head. I'm going to keep my mannequin pretty sketchy, and that's what I'm going to be drawing right now, is that mannequin. It's that core basis that you're sort of seeing here. I'm just going to do a few tweaks and improvements to this basic figure uh, so that we don't need to see all this detail coming in quite yet because that is going to muddy your process. You want to have your figure down, your mannequin down, just like if you were setting up um, a figure to display clothing in a store. You have that sort of nude uh, plaster body first and then you would put the clothes on top of it. So drawing, especially when you're a beginner and you haven't done a lot of cloth drawing or figure drawing, this is the smart way to do it. So start with the head, then our spine is going to lean back in to our midline here. Then we're going to rock downward and place where our pelvis is going to go approximately. I'll use slightly thicker lines than I normally would. Um, just because that will help you see a little better on the screen. So this is basically the S shape of the spine. Um, it's a very subtle S. You can get away with C curves sometimes at certain angles. Basically the back of the spine attaches, or I'm sorry, the top of the spine fuses with the um, brain at the back of the skull, um, top of the neck portion, and that goes into the oval that is the head. Then we cruise down from that all the way down to the pelvis. And we want to gauge those angles right away so that we can um, construct things properly. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to use the shoulder girdle and get out that angle that we're seeing here. It's pretty small, but um, let me flip this. You can see that this is the general angle. It's definitely sort of canted this way. And so we're going to replicate that. Next, I'm going to look at the pelvis angle, and since the legs are spread pretty, pretty, <laughs> excuse me, I can talk. Since the legs are spread pretty far apart, it's probably going to be a pretty level pelvis. Uh, I'm going to push it ever so slightly. I'm not going to make it perfectly horizontal because that will deaden things. I'm going to push it ever so slightly upwards, so more weight is pushing this leg upward. Um, then I'm going to draw in the rib cage and the pelvis. So from my shoulder girdle I can just sort of draw the trapezius muscles or rather a rough uh, basic indication of those muscles and then the neck as well which is just a cylinder. And again I'm just building my mannequin out of these super simple shapes because I'll go over it later. Um, I'm not doing this drawing in one pass. If I were I'd be drawing these shapes differently but we're gonna do a couple passes here just so you can really see the uh, underlying structure of the construction. So then we'll go in with our rib cage and we'll make it a pretty simplified rib cage. Already I can see I'm going a little wide. This the frame of this figure is not that wide. As you can see the breakdown here, it's a fairly lithe, thin figure. So I'm gonna go a little more tapered, you know, it's a smaller bone structure. Um, and so I'm gonna represent that with a smaller primitive. Next, I'm gonna go down into the pelvis and you can see the juxtaposition here where the rib cage ends and this is where the sternum is that's that bottom part of the rib cage and that cruises down as I mentioned earlier into the more pelvic region so the pelvis I'll just go ahead and make that into a cylinder because that's an easy way to see it not the most accurate way but it's it's definitely good enough to get the angles down so now that we have our head our rib cage and our pelvis, what we want to do is start to put in some legs because legs are how we're going to balance the weight of the figure. And that way we can have it appear more believable. So I'm just going to look down, make sure I got enough room, and I do. And I'm going to extrapolate, which is just a fancy word of saying, or a fancy word for saying, draw and extrude outward from this shape some basic stick figure legs and I'm gonna keep it pretty wide just like the stance in our initial drawing by overarch so I'm not quite as wide here and my knees are a little bowed as far as this goes so let's try that one more time the nice thing about working super simple is that you can always erase and redo it so I'm going to place some feet markers first in this case so I know my targets I'm going for. And I'm going to do that one more time.
and this way I have enough information to flip the canvas and check on some of my construction thus far and I'm digging it. It's a little more dynamic and it feels a little more weighty. Uh, let's look at the angle of the feet. Uh, basically this angle here is workable. We got a little bit of perspective issue going on with this dipping in a bit too far. We're seeing too much of the top plane of this. Um, this one is more or less uh, accurate in the angle. So I'm going to just make sure and I rough in some wedges for the feet. Again, this is a super beginner style tutorial. I wouldn't be doing this for most of the figures that I draw um, at the level that I work right now. This is just something you want to do to start getting used to uh, constructing stuff if you're at this beginner level or if you're intermediate but you haven't done a lot of figure drawing construction and so your stuff has some some errors in it. So as per the nice long figure the legs are fairly long and I'm just gonna delineate the knee here. Uh, delineate just being a fancy word again for uh, mark or uh, take it away from being uh, purely linear and this should pretty much do as far as our legs go. We have that nice wide stance. Next we can figure out the arms. And in this case, we'll go back to our initial drawing. Again, we don't want the shoulder popping out of the socket. That's a little too far in front of the torso to believe as far as our construction is concerned. And you have the other one, which is looking pretty decent. This is actually a pretty good angle considering the overall level of anatomy. This is a teeny bit more advanced than the rest of it. So you're tapping into something here over arch. Uh, you got some potential, my friend, so keep hitting it. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make those markers again, you know, where I want the limbs to end up. And I'll just do super simplified hands, almost just paddles, really. I mean, hands are essentially spatula shapes. Or are spatula shapes essentially hands? Uh, without getting too <laughs> philosophical about it, uh, I'm going to just indicate where my ball and socket joint is for the shoulder. And I'm going to then find the joint for the elbow. So I know that the upper arm is going to go to about there. You can already see my arms are a little too far away, so I'll bring those guys in a little bit. This is proportions. This is the proportional aspect of construction, just knowing the parts and their relationship to one another, that relationship being the size as well as the distance. So the forearm is going to be a little long, even if I leave those ones here. So they'll still have to come in a little bit, at least this one will. And this one will go a little more up top so we can have a larger uh, aura sphere or whatever it is he's generating. And then we'll do some of that same nice dynamic flow through the limb for uh, the upper arm here. And now you got this super basic figure that you've constructed. It's just an upgraded stick figure if you will. And it will serve the purpose of you know letting us put in more volumetric primitives later and being more assured of the underlying structure. Um, what I'm going to do at this point, and this is where we go a little more intermediate, so I'm going to group all this stuff, and I'm just going to lower the opacity on it. And I'm basically just going to redraw the character, um, but with a bit more detail and a bit more actual character as opposed to this mannequin that we're working with right now, this uh, basic framework for where the character is going to be. So, again, I'm going to zoom in start with my head. I'll probably lower the brush size a little bit because those are going to be some super chunky lines. I'm going to look at the character without my overdrawing so I can get an initial read. I'll stare at something for a while, really use some observational skill, uh, look at sort of the shape design going on in the head. Um, I see some of it's mirrored in the other attire. I'm not going to worry too much about the detail. Uh, just going to get the basics down. Okay, so that is pretty much in my head at this point. I know the the essence of the shapes, and so I can sort of recapitulate them in, in my own way. 
and in this case I'll just start to do that and it's gonna be fairly sketchy because that's the vibe I'm feeling when I'm recording this I'm not trying to make anything super polished as it's mostly for demonstration purposes this is just the workflow aspect of it redrawing your character again once you've already drawn it we got this eye patch going on I remember which isn't a big detail so I wouldn't worry about it until later in the process usually but we'll throw it in right now just because that's um, that's pertinent as we work our way downward so I'm just tackling stuff from top to bottom now that I have my figure in remember sort of a fierce look so I'll just go for that it's not happy about whatever's going on get that cheekbone out there and essentially these shapes that I started with are just there to guide the more complex shapes I'm laying in right now I think he had a goatee so we'll, we'll rock that in real quick you know staying pretty zoomed out not worried about too many of the facial details as that will slow down the process and since this is a live recording you don't want to slow down the process too much speaking of which gonna pause real quick and now the canvas is flipped so I'll go in I think he had elf ears some strong sharp sort of shapes for the ears sketch those in real quick probably some more gaunt cheekbones given that the overall um, bone structure is doesn't have a lot of fat on it and is very thin stuff you can think about in your construction so the neck just that simplified cylinder gonna be a fairly thin neck due to the um, ectomorphic bone structure and we had some sort of like three leaf shapes somewhat druidic shapes coming out here so I'll just lay those in super quick and that led to like a collar of sorts up there I'll just sketch that in doesn't need to be super indicative after which we had the upper arm showing so just some very simple musculature I'm not going too detailed then I will sort of draw around the form of the cylinder that is the bicep here and again my uh, elbow got a little long out here so I'll just fix that in this drawing looks like there's also a some sort of elbow pad so we'll work that in finally get down to the wrist where we have another piece and lastly we're gonna we're gonna have to draw that spatula shape of the hand and the thumb I'm gonna I'm gonna subdivide these just to make it a little more simple to see them I have a tendency to sketch very gesturally within the form um, but I'll make these really crisp and easy to see just for demonstration purposes I tend to redraw my sketch twice uh, but for this one we'll just we're gonna make it super constructive and a little more stylized uh, again since the bone structure is one that tapers quite a bit at the joints I will just sort of keep playing to that as I sketch here you see it's real easy to lose your construction as you enter into various parts of a tire in this case this pad of sorts I know it's gonna have to have bends in it because it's at a joint and the joint will have to bend at certain areas which means that it's gonna have to compress in one part and 
it's going to have to just sort of straighten out at another. So there's that. After which, we'll go in with a similar process for the other arm. Remembering those various pieces of attire. And you don't want to go too flowy, otherwise it looks noodly and not well constructed. But you don't want to go too straight because then it looks too stiff and thus loses believability. So there's there's definitely a balance to be struck. And sometimes it takes some erasing and redrawing, erasing, redrawing. It's okay if you don't get it the first time, but if you don't get it by like the twentieth time, it's probably time to find reference or use a study. I might touch on that in later videos. So I am not going to figure out the hand posture quite yet. I'm going to draw the rest of the body before I come back to that. Um, looks like we had sort of a triangular piece here. I'm just going to roughly indicate the rest of the form. There's a piece that goes down and goes past the pelvis, past the groin area. Just sort of goes turns into this wizard robe and then there's a couple pieces that float out from the back of that but I'm gonna draw the legs first because those are behind the legs and thus they don't have priority the legs always have priority in some capacity we gotta pay attention to those so there's some belts coming off the side just link one of those up quick wrap it around the form and there's pants underneath this robe, this top robe here. Um, I'm going to draw in the volumetric aspect of the legs since the pants are uh, pretty fitted on the design by Overarch. I'm going to do some bends at the clothing points, or the joints, bends at the joints of the clothing points. <laughs> After which, just sort of subdivide, make it a little easier to see, figure out the parts where it flares out a little more. just follow suit on the other side. Have some billowing happening because there's um, it gets tucked into the boots which have a fair amount of detail. And then since I've already pretty much figured out the angle of the feet I'll just draw in some slightly more appealing boot shapes and I'll subdivide them to give the illusion of detail. But it also helps with construction, again. Alright, so I'm going to check the flow of the joints a little bit. This is flattening things out. You got to be careful with uh, that portion right here. That's why it's, it's pertinent to redraw a cloth a couple times. Um, because of the angle I chose, if I get that wrong, it's really going to look quite flat. And with just line, it can be hard to sell volume in general. So you want to watch how you're contouring things around the forms. And then we will go ahead and just start adding in just some small subdivisions and details just to again delineate things separate them so they read better basically this is a bunch of belts so I'm just doing horizontal lines to roughly indicate that and then I'll go in and connect up some of these shoulder pieces which I'll then detail up a little bit more too and then we're gonna figure out the poses of the hands so that we can actually um, sorry I'm getting into drawing mode drawing mode and talking mode are sort of interchangeable uh, they have to flicker back and forth between one another to work properly so yeah um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna redraw the hand pose 
so we can figure those out real quick. I'm going to move this down slightly so it's coming out of the middle of the wrist and not resting at the top. Again, you can really easily lose form within your um, when you start adding clothing and bits like that because everything has to wrap around form in order to give the illusion of things being dimensional and giving depth. There's other ways to do that and I'll, I'll do one more small pass over this but um, in the second version of the drawing I'm just going in and making sure that forms are overlapping so I get a little more volume in some of this. I was worried predominantly about structure before but as you as you can see adding complexity means that we have to account for all these things that are now coming in even though we had our underlying structure which you can still see uh, it still means that as we add more complex shapes and more subdivisions uh, of those shapes we need to ensure that we're not letting things flatten out in certain areas and that just means really getting into the mindset of checking your work I go over things several times in all these different areas and capacities I keep flipping the canvas sometimes I'll rotate at 90 degrees and I'll squint um, just to check it out like this is breaking a little bit I can see like because of the position of the ankle and I wouldn't have caught that had I not rotated at 90 degrees I can double check it again it's not a terrible break but it's enough to make it look um, really sort of uh, again broken and this is the sort of stuff you want to watch out for um, I'm not suggesting that um, you can't erase and you can't move stuff around because you definitely should it's more about just error checking uh, sometimes when you've drawn something enough times and you're not really challenging yourself and you're in your comfort zone pretty deep then you won't have to check for errors as much because you've drawn it so many times that you know uh, fundamentally and technically it's a little more correct but since I'm working off a pose that I haven't done a ton I'm using just the fundamentals and my own artistic sensibilities and intuition and logic to uh, parse out some of these areas and make sure that things are reading at certain levels and just going in and adding little bits of detail here and there and making the video longer than necessary probably <laughs> but you might enjoy it you might be learning a couple things um, at this point it's also good to ask for a subscription so if you want to subscribe hit the notification bell give me a thumbs up and you know, all that fun YouTube stuff that everybody says to do uh, that's super helpful I really appreciate it um, let's draw that hand pose I talked about before I went on a tangent of error checking which is important so you should do that too um, as far as getting that hand pose down, that's something I can tell you really sort of struggle with as you sort of hid them within the uh, effect you're using here. Um, what I'm going to do about that is I'm going to really break those down so you don't have to hide from them anymore. Artists tend to hide from hands and that goes for myself included, but when you really understand them fundamentally, you don't have to run it's because they, they make more sense. Uh, so again, our shape is going to be kind of a spatula. It's really that simple, and you can subdivide about that much of it for the thumb. Um, it's about a, almost a little more than a fourth, you know. Um, it takes up for the thumb. I'd say, yeah, that's that's about a fourth, and that extrapolates outward uh, into this sort of region, and that then has one more good iteration that you can subdivide. You get a nice little thumb shape there. Lastly, you know, the fingers, those just sort of come upwards at four points um, at the top of our spatula. And they're not all even, and every hand is different depending on your genetics or you know what you do in your everyday life, how your bones grew, stuff like that but it's a pretty safe bet to say that they're all going to have arches where you can kind of place the joints and in this case that's going to let you know you know how to construct each one where it's really just simple cylinders made out of those you know three separate uh, tarsals I think 
I know there's phalanges and there's tarsals. I need to brush up on my actual anatomy definitions, but yeah, so there's arches, there's the spatula, there's the, you know, the, the thumb meat that jumps out into the thumb. And that's what gives us our nice opposable uh, action there. So anyway, let's figure out how the hands are going to be holding the power that they're wielding. So I'll start with that same spatula shape, only I'm going to turn it to the side because that's what makes sense. And the thumbs are always toward the, or not always, but you can turn them towards the inside of your body. And that's what I'm going to do with these two spatulas. I'm going to turn the thumbs inward and I'm going to sort of crook them. So it looks like they're, they're clasping and grasping at the power. So in this case, I'm going to do that, but I'm going to overlap the form in my construction because it's canted at a different angle than this one, which is more profile and flat like the demonstration. Next goes the fingers, and you can just draw lines for those like we did for the um, the other limbs as they came out, and that's a rough sort of indicator of how it's going to go. Um, it doesn't look as strong as maybe I'd like it, because he's going to be emitting that power or beam, so let's try that one more time at the top of the spatula get a little more claspy, a little more graspy. Uh, that means having a stronger bend to all of them. And once you draw the first one, again breaking it down into those three shapes, then you can just run along that top part of the spatula and follow suit. They don't all need to be perfectly separated because some will overlap, but you just don't want to run from them, you know. Just draw a bunch of hands, screw some of them up, it'll be fine. Nobody will hurt you. Nobody will come to your house with a hammer and break your hands because you did it wrong. What a world that would be. So we're not getting that claspy, graspy look I'm going for with this one because the basis isn't serving us in that capacity. So I'm going to redo that initial shape and bend the wrist a little more flowing maybe because it's sort of an elegant pose. Um, we can still clasp at it but not as um, not as brutally because the rest of the pose doesn't read that way. So you got some very curled hands that are going to be generating that power. And some of them are going to overlap. Sometimes you might not see the pinky. Um, I'm going to check these real quick by turning it. Now this piece is a little off. And checking it from several different angles is just, it's just good form. You, it teaches you so much about the actual piece that you're working on. So that's looking a little better for our basis. And that one over there looks pretty fine. That's only three fingers, but we probably wouldn't see the other one. I can just add the knuckle. So then we're just going to do that quick power effect. So here's a circle, of which will be an emanator. And I don't got a ton of room over there because I didn't leave myself very much room. So let's expand the canvas quickly. Just a little bit. And then, since I'm on that layer, let's go ahead and draw some powery, wavery lines. The circle being the emitter of the power. And probably radiates in all directions. You can think about the way that things move and flow as far as physics goes, or however you want to parse it. It's just some quick powery doodles. Because it's not the main point. The main point is the figure construction which we've been talking about. So there's that. That's looking pretty neat. And let's take away the demo hand because that's served its purpose. Here's our overall figure we ended up with uh, based on, again, the drawing by Overarch and it's almost like they're gonna have a, a battle here, like they're both gonna shoot their powers at each other. But yeah, essentially what you're doing 
Um, I try to keep pretty true to the proportions of sort of the lanky longness of the figure and the thinness of, of some of the forms. But yeah, what you want to do is you want to construct your figures in a way that makes sense and allows you to then add the details later. Again, this is a very sketchy drawing. Um, I would, if I was going to actually give this a bunch of effects and potency and finish it up, I would be more rigorous with my construction. But again, this is one of um, one of the methods that's more beginner oriented, so the results will look um, still fairly, you know, achievable uh, at that level. I don't want to overwhelm anybody. Um, let's just take the key takeaways real quick on this so that we can give you some action points to walk away with, uh, not only Overarch, but you who's watching, you wonderful artist you. Uh, one of the big ones is to uh, use our initial midline, so that gave us a way to parse the rest of the figure. I sat the center of gravity, which is the pelvis, right on the midline. Um, another thing that I did was I started from the head down. You can start wherever you want as long as you know how to place your pieces. Uh, the last thing I did was I used really basic forms to work out this figure. These are very simple forms. I didn't get too fancy. I went over them a couple times just to keep tweaking them and sort of sculpting them, sculpting those lines, you know, with some erasing and redrawing. But uh, in essence, it is just taking fundamentals that anybody can learn and using them to break down some of the problem areas and to, you know, use some of what's working and this is sort of the the fun result you can come to in approximately 36 minutes which is far longer than i plan on recording this anyway i hope you enjoyed this uh, i'm taylor payton and you can find my stuff at taypayart.com which is in the description box um, i offer one-on-one -on -one mentorships for up to a year uh, there's also the artist accelerator academy which is again in the description box if you want a more serious uh, kind of overview and critique like this uh, in a community-based setting. Otherwise, I hope you have been enjoying the content. Sign up for the mailing list for free maps on where to go next with your art and stuff like that. Uh, but otherwise, I will be seeing you in the next video. Don't forget to construct your figures and show them the love they deserve when you're making them. And overarch, keep kicking butt, keep working on your figure drawing. Uh, start more simple and then go to complex stuff. Um, and that goes for you too, Power Painter. Other than that, I will see you in future videos. All the good stuff in the description box. Take care and happy creating.